Three stocks at 52 week low. We're always looking for opportunity. This is your Uncle Paul, guys. Let's get with it. First stock, Moderna, M R N A, Mosafine. What do you think of our good friend Moderna? All time high of 500 bucks in August of 2021. What was going on at this time, Mo? Um, I think there was like a pandemic or epidemic or something. So it was about a year into that. But at the same point, guys, we always warned. We did warn about Go this. look at our videos. Go look at Pfizer. Go look at Moderna. Look at our videos. We said, is this a permanent thing? We were apprehensive about that. The stock was at $500 a share. It's at $81 per share. And I can assure you guys, at this point, the thought of this company going down 70 or 80% seemed unimaginable. And guess what? Down more than 80% right yeah. now. That's the incredible part. So let's go look at its income statement. Let's figure some things out. It's a $31 billion company. Look at its revenue. Let's just do annual here. Mo, look at this. But this is even more telling. Look at the four quarters. 140 million, 94 million, 57 million, 6.2 billion, COVID, 22.3 billion, still COVID stuff, now 10.5 billion. Let's look at their profit. Lost 200, lost 500, lost 500, made 3.5, made 14, made 1.2. Guys, if you bought based on this profit, you're crazy. And then it fell 90%. How does that feel? Remember, we talk about this all the time. I brought up this example on Twitter yesterday. Zim, Z-I-M. We kept saying to people, guys, it's shipping. Shipping has skyrocketed because of the COVID stuff. Is this a permanent plateau? We don't know. But we didn't think it was because we saw shipping costs go up 300, 400% at the time. And I look at Moderna and all their revenue came from COVID. Could COVID be around forever? Sure, it could be like, the, like you just get a COVID shot all the time. But does that mean it's going to have these kind of revenue numbers? I don't know. I think it was funny. I remember going back to, going back when we were in our old studio saying, guys, they, their pipeline, they have one drug to market. That's ever, it. Ever. And now they have two. So they have the COVID vaccine and they have a flu vaccine. Good job, guys. Look at their... Look at their EPS. Oh, by the way, according to analysts, they're going to lose $4 a share this year, increasing to five fifty. They're not even getting profitability back until December of 2027. And that's if things in their pipeline work out. You well, know how finicky drugs are. Yeah. And look at their revenue. They're expecting a 64% drop in revenue this year, down to $7 billion. And then, guys, this is... This is the perfect... I have a really quick answer for you, Mo. You know what it moment. is? Pass. 100%. But like you said, it's a teachable moment. That's it. We sit there and guys, we don't want to look at the stock price and the activity of the stock price. When you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a business. And like we've said before, you have to be able to determine some sort of future of the business. Of course, the future is unknown. We don't know what's going to happen. But for a company like Moderna, Mo, like you were saying before this video, the stock was at 500 and so many people are going to fall in love with, oh, it's 81 now. It must be cheap. Nope. Doesn't mean it's cheap. <laughs> The analogy I always give is, if that's the way we do business, great. If I have a house that's worth a half a million bucks, I'm going to ask five million. Have it sit in the market for two months and ask two and a half, say, hey, it's half off. And people will be like, oh, that's a great deal. No, it's still only worth half a million dollars. That's what the market bears. And every investment is the present value of all future cash flows. So you have to be able to figure out a way to determine the cash flows here. For Moderna, I can't move on. Yep. Stock number two is the company that I own. T. Rowe Price. Do not buy this company just because I own it. I am a long-term investor and I want to teach a process. This company might not fit in your process, but let's take a look at it right now. T. Rowe. 96 bucks. $96 a share. All-time high of 206 back in August of 2021. All-time high. Now, this company manages money. They're a very big 401k provider. They make a lot of money in fees. Some of the things I like about them. Their price to free cash flow is 17. Their five year is 11. Look at their PE, 14. And their five year PE is 9.8. Healthy margins, but it's down a lot. And I expect that the margins will decrease if the market continues to go down. Last year, the market was down a lot, so their fees were down. Right. And if, if you watch this channel, I think the market's going to have a very bad next 10 years. That's why my price for T Row is going to be a lot lower. Okay? Yep. Do they pay a dividend? Huge dividend. <laughs> 5.2%. That's the majority of the money they're, they're sending back to people. Yeah. Their five-year free cash flow is $2 billion. I don't think this dividend is safe. 
um, bait, I'm looking at their free cash flow right now by a year. No, it doesn't look like Especially if the market goes down again. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think this free cash flow is safe. Yep. And that's something to consider. Guess how much it affects me. I'm, I have it on my watch list. So let's go check um, really high um, return on invested capital, 17.4%. Let's look at their eight pillars. Six checks, two Xs. Net income is down. Makes sense. Free cash flow is down. Also makes sense. Okay. Guys, again, this other stuff looks very, very attractive. But remember, this business will have a lot of headwinds if the markets are flat for a while or down. And look at it. When the market was just absolutely flossing, look what happened. People yep. flocked to them. And when people, when the opposite happens, people are going to go away from them. So it's very simple. And look at the analyst estimates. Expected to make 730 per share this year. And overly optimistic analysts are at 780 <laughs> in four years. So maybe they have think something too. Revenue? Wow. Actually going to be lower in four or five years. So this is an example of a company, guys, that's going to be probably ignored a lot because people are going to say, where's the growth here? Hopefully it gets beaten down more and more. This is a company I want to analyze here. Now, guys, our stock analyzer tool has been used over 2 million times since we started keeping track. And we actually have a user who in one month used it 968 times or something or 985 times. It's absurd, but it's so useful for giving you guidance based on the cash flow of the company, where, how to invest in it. Now, I talk about the community a lot. I talk about the stock analyzer and the other tools a lot. And all these tools we haven't even gotten to yet. I want you to join. But I don't want you to just join and make a yes or no decision right here, right now. I want you to make an informed decision. Just like if you were to buy a car, you want to take that 15-minute test drive. I'm asking you to take a test drive of our community. Get in the community. Talk to other like-minded investors. Get an idea of what they're saying. Tell them what you're saying. The engagement is amazing. If you use this, I guarantee you'll walk away going, this changed the way in which I look at money. And even better, it's a seven-day, full-access, free test drive. So just go to everythingmoney.com, sign up, full free access for seven full days, Go in the chat, go to the general chat and tag me. I'm at Uncle Paul. Say hi, tell me where you're from and tell me you're new to the, to the community. I love it very much. So when was the last time we did T-Row in was, our stock analyzer tool? Mine was May. Mine was June. Okay. Okay. So I did a 10-year analysis. Now remember, Mo. Oh, I did a five. For a company like this, there's gonna be a lot of volatility on the, uh, on the stock. Yeah. So it's hard to do a 10-year analysis on this, but I'm going to. I did zero three and 6% revenue growth. What did you do? I actually did negative two, zero and two. For five years. For, for five years. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yep. Okay. Profit margin. All right. I did 24, 28 and 32. I did 29, 32 and 35. So if you look here, the 10 years, 33, five years, 35, we had a really big bull market in that time. Yeah. So guys, you might sit there and say, Paul, you're being too conservative. Yeah. But I think the revenue is going to, I think the profit's going to fall quite a bit. I think, I think my numbers are a touch high. Now for free cash flow, I went 22, 26, and 30, just slightly lower than their profit margin because historically they've been lower. Yeah, I did 24, 26, and 28. All right. Now for PE, what's the PE and the price of free cash flow it's going to be at the end of this 10 years? Not any time in between at the end of 10 years. I did 15, 17, and 19 for both. I have 15, 16, 17. Okay. And finally, guys, desired annual return. Now, as my assumptions go higher, I need a higher return, more margin of safety. I did 9, 11, and 13. Never forget. I did 9, 11, and 13. What about you? So I actually did 11, 13, and 15. Oh, wow. So what Mo's doing there, yeah. he's sitting there saying, listen, I'm apprehensive here. I want to be more conservative. I need to have more return on this company. Yeah. I'm saying, you know what? I feel comfortable with these numbers. So I'm okay with these returns. And that's what's great about the stock analyzer tool. It's about what your assumptions are for the company, not anybody else's. You guys could, Mo and I could 100% agree on all of this, but he might sit there and say, Paul, I really don't want this company unless it's absurdly high return. So I'm going to make my returns really high. Mm -hmm. That's what's great. So hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 96. Okay. I have a low price of 75 to 80, high price of 140 to 150, a middle price of 100 to 111. If you paid today's price and my low assumptions occur, 5.5%. Middle assumptions occur 12%. High assumptions occur 18%. Mo, what'd you get? I have 73 to 88 on the low, 95 to 120 on the high, and the middle is about 85 to 105. Great. And I have it on my watch list at 90 bucks. I'll Mine be notified. 90 bucks as well. Stock number three, another company that I own, PayPal. This one gets a lot of attention from a lot of people. And the reason I love talking about this one is all-time high. 
July 26, 2021 of $310 per share. Yesterday, it hit an all-time, a 52-week <laughs> low of $52 per share. Wow. So, everybody loved it, 310. Now people are criticizing it. Paul, it's a terrible company. I literally had somebody on Twitter the other day say to me, Paul, it's not even a growing company anymore. And I'm like, guys, how can it not be growing and revenues going up? I don't understand that. <laughs> I, I look at this. So let's go look at the income statement. And let's look quarter to quarter. The previous quarter, June of 2026, 2023, sorry, 7.3 billion. June of 2022, 6.8. Guys, it's not a lot of growth, but you can't tell me it's a declining business. Yeah, but they're literally almost at record revenue. And they're even guiding. As part of their guidance last quarter, they sat there and said, yeah, we expect 7 to 8% of revenue growth. Let's look what analysts are saying about it. EPS growth of double digits for the next four or five years. Double digits. Revenue growth of high single digits and getting into double digits. How is that a declining business? They could be wrong. There is, some, there is competition for PayPal. Don't get me wrong. But boy, do I trust PayPal. There's even versus Apple. Try to get a hold of somebody at Apple, but do customer support at PayPal. It's way better. PayPal for international, for a lot of things, whenever I can use PayPal, when I need to know I'm secure in buying this, I absolutely do it. That's where I like PayPal. Let's look at their eight pillars. One X, and that's the free cash flow X. And I don't like the fact their free cash flow is down, but look at this, Mo. $5 billion average for the last five years, 3.7 in the last year. Okay, so it's, it's down for mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. And the return on invested capital isn't huge, but they're also investing a lot to grow the business. Mm -hmm. Now, this one falls basically. Let's go to my stock analyzer tool. Let's look it up. When was the last time I did a PayPal stock analyzer? When September 25th. September 5th for me. Okay, my revenue growth assumptions. Four, eight, and 12. Mo, what were yours? Mine were the same. Okay, profit margin. I assumed there's gonna be more competition. I did 12 and a half. 16 and a half and 20 and a half. And the reason I went higher here was because their gross margin is very high. It's like 50%. So as they get more and more revenue in, they're going to start driving more profit to the bottom line. What'd you do? I did 12 and a half, 15 and a half, and 18 and a half. Okay, so pretty close. Free cash flow. Guys, look at this. Their free cash flow has been significantly higher than their profit margin. So I went 16, 20, and 24. I What'd you do? 17, 20, and 23. Okay. And for PE, this is actually where I went a little conservative because of the competition. I did 13, 16, and 19. Same with the price of free cash flow. What'd you do? I did 16, 18, and 20. Oh, wow. So you gave them a higher multiple than I did. I mean, revenue, I mean, I'm actually surprised at yours yeah. because with those revenues and those margins, that's a dominant business. I wanted Texas. to hedge a little bit. Yeah. Because also look at my desired return. I only did 11, 13, and 15. Okay, I did 10, 12, and 14. Okay. So, analyze button. Stock's currently at 54. I got one red. Yeah, me too. 42 to 54, 120 to 140, middle price is 75 to 89. And guys, I fully expect the stock to go lower. And don't follow me on this one, but I will buy more shares until my thesis has changed. So guys, everythingmoney.com, go sign up, seven days, full access, free trial.